Hello, everybody. Um, on October 27, 2013, I was at Rockaway Beach, and I got the message that Lou Reed had passed. It was a solitary moment. I was by myself, and I thought of him by the ocean, and I got on the subway back to New York City. It was a 55-minute ride, and in that 55 minutes, when I turned, returned to New York City, it was as if the whole city had transformed. People were crying on the streets. I could hear Lou's voice coming from every cafe. Everyone was playing his music. Everyone was walking around dumbfounded. Strangers came up to me and hugged me. The boy who made me coffee was crying. It was the whole city was more... Sorry. I realized at that moment that I had forgotten when I was on the subway that he was not only my friend, he was the friend of New York City. I made my first eye contact with Lou, dancing to the Velvet Underground when they were playing upstairs at Max's Kansas City in the summer of 1970. The Velvet Underground were great to dance to because they're, um, they had this sort of uh, uh, transformative, uh, um, like a surf beat, like a dissonant surf beat, and they were just fantastic to dance to. And well, somewhere along the line, Lou and I became friends. It was a complex friendship sometimes antagonistic and sometimes sweet. Lou would sometimes emerge from the shadows at CBGB's. If I did something, if I did something good, he would praise me. If I made a false move, he would break it down. One night when we were touring separately, we wound up in the same hotel and I got a call from him and he asked me to come to his room. He sounded a little dark, so I was a little nervous, but I went up and the door was open and I found him in the bathtub dressed in black. And uh, so I sat on the toilet and uh, listened to him talk. It seemed like he talked for hours and he talked about well, all kinds of things. He spoke compassionately about the struggles of those who fall between genders. He spoke of pre-CBS fender amplifiers and political corruption. But most of all, he talked about poetry. He recited the great poets, Rupert Brooke and Hart Crane, Frank O'Hara. He spoke of the poets, um, loneliness and of the poet's, um, the poet's dedication to the highest of muses. When he fell into silence, I said, please take care of yourself so the world can have you as long as it can. And Lou actually smiled. Everything that Lou taught me, I remember. He was a humanist, heralding and raising the downtrodden. His subjects were his royalty that he crowned in his lyrics without judgment or irony. He gave us Beyond the Velvet Underground, Transformer, Walk on the Wild Side, Berlin, Meditations in New York, Homages to Poe, and his great mentor, Andy Warhol, and magic and loss. His consciousness, 
His consciousness infiltrated and illuminated our cultural voice. Lou was a poet, able to fold his poetry within his music in the most poignant and plain-spoken manner. Oh, it's such a perfect day. Sorry. Sorry. It's such a perfect day. I'm glad I spent it with you. You made me forget myself. I thought I was someone else, someone good. You were good, Lou. You are good. True poets must often stand alone. As a poet, he must be counted as a solitary artist. And so, Lou, thank you for brutally and benevolently injecting your poetry into music. And for this, we welcome you, Lou. And for this, we welcome you, Lou Reed, into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs>